Now, what is the anointing? What is the anointing? What do we mean when we say someone is anointed? Most people, the only thing they know about the anointing is when somebody is preaching and the person is preaching and saying, Oh my God, and God is going to change your life. And God is going to lift you. Ah, oh my God is going to turn your life around. When somebody is shouting like that, they think that is the anointing. No, my friend, that is not the anointing. That can be a, 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 a replica or, or, a, 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 or a, 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 um, an effect of the anointing, but that alone is not the anointing. The anointing is more than preaching. The anointing is more than shouting. The anointing is more than healing. The anointing is more than prophecy. When we say the Hebrew word for anointing is the word maksha, which literally is in fourfold. The meaning of the word is in fourfold. When we say somebody is anointed, it can mean four different things. Things and I'm going to take you through today into all the four teaching. This week is teaching and a bit of prayer and a bit of prophecy as the Lord God will lead us. Are you hearing me? So you need to connect your mind, your heart, your spirit right here as we move. So when we say somebody is anointed, when we say somebody is anointed, when we say someone is anointed, what does that mean? What, what do we mean when we say somebody is anointed? The person is anointed. Now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. The word anointing, like I said, comes from the Hebrew word maksha, which literally, first, the first meaning of the anointing is when we say someone is anointed, it means that the person has been set apart. When we say you are anointed, it means you have been set apart for a divine use. When we say um, Mariama is anointed, it means she has been set apart apart. When we say Eunice is anointed, it means she has been set apart. When we say John is anointed, it means John has been set apart for a divine use. When we say you are, you are anointed, it simply means there is a divine assignment. My God. God has assigned you for and that anointing, you have been assigned for that specific and that divine assignment. When we say you are anointed, that means there is a divine assignment, a specific God-given assignment. And this assignment that is divine has been given to you to do. When we, when we say someone is anointed, the person, it means the person has been set apart for a divine use. You are set apart for a divine assignment. You are set apart for a divine purpose. You are set apart for a divine use. So well, that is why if you check in the old days, Oh, in the Old Testament, when you check the scriptures, any king that was 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 enthroned in Israel had to be anointed. Any king that was enthroned had to be anointed. You could not become a king if you were not touched with oil. Now they would take oil and pour it on the head of the king. It was to say this person among the lot has been set apart for God to use as a king to reign over his people. So when you, we say you are anointed it simply means you are being set apart for a divine assignment. Tonight, God is going to set some people apart for a divine assignment. God is going to set some people apart for a divine assignment. Listen to me. 
When we say you are anointed, you have been set apart for a divine assignment. So all kings were set apart for divine assignment. All kings were set apart for God's assignment and for God's purpose. So when you are anointed, it, there is something about you that makes you different from the ordinary. God has placed his hand on you to pick you for his work. So that is the first meaning of of the anointing the second meaning of the anointing is means it means you have been empowered to accomplish a specific task for you to be anointed it also means you have been empowered to accomplish a specific task when we say Pastor Josephine is anointed. It means that she has been anointed or empowered to accomplish a specific task. When we say um, Thomas Njenga is anointed, it means that he has been anointed or empowered to accomplish a specific task. When we say Prophet David is anointed, it means he has been empowered to accomplish a specific task. Tax. Now listen to me. There are people in the scriptures who carried anointing, but they were never preachers. Some people think that once you are anointed, you must be a preacher. Not all people that are anointed are preachers. Let me tell you this. When we say something was anointed, something was anointed, but something was not anointed to preach. In fact, let me put, let me draw this bombshell that will blow your mind. Something was anointed to beat up people. Samson was anointed. He said that Samson was anointed. He lost his anointing after he slept on the lap of Delilah and his hair was shaving. What was Samson's anointing for? Samson's anointing was to beat up people. The guy was anointed with strength to beat up people. He was anointed with strength to beat up people. There are some people, they are anointed to accomplish a specific task. Somebody may be anointed to sing. Uh, like like uh, Pastor Hess is anointed to sing. Like some people uh, know... Um, uh, anointed to do business. You know, um, um, some people like Vera is anointed to do business. Um, someone I know, uh, like, like, um, 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 say me, I am anointed to preach the gospel and to prophesy and to break chains of people. So there are different times or ways in which people can be anointed. You see, somebody can be anointed to sing. Another person can be anointed to preach. Another person can be anointed with strength for muscle. Somebody can be anointed for business. There are certain people, they have got a special grace for business. Something was anointed to beat up people. Something's anointing was not to preach. Something's anointing was not to break chains. Something's anointing was strength for battle. You see, so you need to understand there are different types of anointings and different reasons why God anoints people. Tonight, God can anoint you to do business. God can anoint you to excel in your office. God can anoint you for the marketplace. When you are in corporate, you are a police officer, but you are anointed for your job. God can anoint you to, 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 to be a great businessman in, in, in the whole of Africa. God can anoint you for a specific assignment. Listen to me. God can anoint you to, to, to do anything. Anything you can be anointed by God to do anything good. You see, when we say you are anointed, you have been empowered. You have received some supernatural grace and power to accomplish a specific task, to do something unique, to do something special. Tonight, let me prophesy over you. As you look at me right here, may God give you grace. May you receive an anointing for business, an anointing for your job, an anointing for your career, an anointing for ministry. Listen to me. When you are empowered, it means 
means it is not your power. It is a supernatural power that comes upon your life that energizes you to do. When you are empowered, it means it is a supernatural power that comes upon your life and it energizes you to accomplish. When you are empowered, it is a supernatural power that comes upon your life. It energizes you. The same way you a car cannot move by itself to one place. When you put fuel in the car, the fuel uh, um, is able to give the car an ability to move. There is when the anointing of God comes upon your life, things you cannot do, you shall be able to do it. Some people are even anointed for marriage. They have got a special grace for marriage. Some people are anointed for churches. They have got special grace for churches. Some people are anointed to pastor. They have got special grace for pastoring. See, somebody was asking me, hey, man of God, are you not getting tired? You keep coming online every day. It is an anointing. It is a special grace, a special divine ability that comes upon my life and makes me to be able to do what I'm doing. So you can be anointed for anything. And so my prayer today and this week is that you will not walk in life by your own strength, but you will receive an anointing. You will receive grace. You will receive power. You will receive an anointing to do the impossible an anointing to accomplish the impossible, an anointing to achieve whatever it is you want to achieve, receive grace in the name of Jesus. So number three, number three, number three, the third meaning of the word maksha or makshia, which is derived from maksha, means uh, it refers to refers to the house of David. Oh, it refers to the promised Christ. You see, the word anointed is is also the name of Christ. You see, when we say um 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 some the anointed, the anointed, you know, Jesus is called Jesus Christ. The word Christ comes from the Greek word Christos, which means the anointed one. The the name Jesus Christ, the second name name Christ comes from the Greek word Christos which means the anointed one so actually watch this there is something great I'm going to tell you here actually Jesus is actually called Jesus the anointed one so the word anointed is also, also refers to the name of Jesus when, when we say so when you so that, that is that is why you see it's it's it, it actually says this so when we when the scripture says in in Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 there is something profound I want to show you don't go don't go don't go watch this share this broadcast let somebody hear this share it share it for me right now there is something Something bomb, a bomb I'm going to release right here. You see, so the word Christos means the anointed one and his anointing. The word Christos or Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. The anointed one and his anointing. So when you read Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ. When you read the original King James, it says, which strengthens me. He says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Why would the Bible say I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, and not I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me? The, the pronoun I mean, used that is which. It's actually, so the, the reason why they put that pronoun there is that the word Christ there is the word Christ in the Greek, which literally means the anointed one and his anointing. So the scripture, if you put the meaning of the word Christ there and you, re you replace it with the word Christ, it's the scripture actually reads, I can do all things through the anointed one and his anointing which strengthens me. He says, I can do all things through the anointed one and his anointing which strengthens me. You can do everything through the anointed one that is Christ Jesus and his power, his ability, his anointing, which 
strengthens you. You can do all things. You can get your marriage back through the anointed one and his anointing which strengthens you. I can do all things through the anointed one and his anointing which strengthens me. I can do all things through the anointed one and his anointing which strengthens me. In other words, when you are in Christ, there is an anointing in Christ that empowers you and strengthens you to do. Today, as you watch me from your home, I pray for you. May the anointing of Christ come upon you to help you to accomplish everything you want to accomplish in the name of Jesus. He says, I can do all things through Christ. Which strength is me? And I said, the word Christ there means Christos. So the scripture actually reads, I can do all things through the anointed one and his anointing, which strengthens me. The anointed one. There is an anointing that is coming upon you, Mildred. There is an anointing that is coming upon you, Patrick. There is an anointing that is coming upon you, Thomas. And his anointing, which will strengthen you. Mahadabahaya. Tonight, after tonight, I want you to understand you can achieve anything. You can do anything. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't move forward. Don't let anybody tell you you are an non-entity. You can't go far. I came to let you know there is an anointing that is going to come upon your life, Sherelle, that will make you achieve the impossible. You will do the impossible. You will go to places where no one has said you'll be able to go. There is an anointing that is coming upon your life today. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May that anointing be released over your life tonight. Receive that anointing to do. Now, let me tell you something. I'm going to show you something profound. Listen to me. I'm going to demonstrate something to you that will shock you. I'm going to teach you the origin of the anointing. The origin. Today, I'm introducing the subjects. And that's why I'm taking my time. You see, I'm going to introduce to you the origin of this word called anointing. I want you to share the broadcast for me right here. Share it and share it and share it again. I want to introduce to you the origin of the word anointing. Now, the word anointing is derived from the practice of shepherds. In the olden days, the Israelites at the time, they were shepherds pests and they were nomadics. So they used to rear cattle, sheep, goats, and all those kind of things. Now watch this. They used to rear cattle. So what will happen is that when the cattle grow, lice and insects will enter into the wool of the cattle, the skin, and they will find them their way to the nostrils of the cattle. And then the insects will enter into the nose and through the ears and every opening, every moist opening that those lice will find, they will enter through and get into the brain and then what will happen is that the cattle will feel itchiness in their head. Why? Because incest have gone in there. So what happened was that the cattle will try to itch the head. So because they cannot itch the head, they will hit their heads on walls and trees and in, in an attempt to scratch their head and scratch the inside of their head. So what happened is that they ended up dying. So the cattle were dying and dying. Why? Because lies kept entering into their nostrils, into their ears, their mouths, and it got to their brain. Now watch this. So they decided to improvise a practice, come up with a solution to that. So what they did was this. Listen to me right here. They brought up what was called the anointing. Now, this is oil. They brought up what was called the anointing. So they will rub the face of the cattle with the oil. And they will rub the body of the cattle with the oil. They rub the body of the cattle with the oil. Why? The reason why they rub the body of the cattle with oil. This, you see the way I've rubbed myself with oil. What happens was that in case a lice wants to 
walk on the face or the head of the cattle to go through the nose because oil was on the head of the cattle what will happen was that friction has now been reduced so those insects will not be able to move freely as they try to walk on the head they will slip and fall as they will try to walk on the head of the cattle they will slip and fall so these cattle were protected and preserved be by the practice of the anointing. I'm showing you how the word anointing came about. The anointing came because the nomads of old, they needed a way to protect the cattle, their animals from dying. So they came up with a strategy. They came up with a way to save the cattle from dying. So what happened was this. They took oil and the, the word anointing also means to smear. They smeared it on the head of the cattle. So what happened is that now the, the cattle will, will, will have oil on themselves and they, as the lies begin to move on the cattle, the friction is reduced so they will fall, they will start slipping and they will start falling off the face of the cattle and off the openings of the cattle. So the cattle were preserved from dying. Ma'andi bi atosa. So they, so God also saw that these, that these people could relate with the anointing. They could relate with smearing of oil on the animal. So God also brought it to the people and said to them, and said to them, from now, you will also use it on the people that are being set apart for kingdom assignment. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you this, Ma'adabaya. If oil in those days, as they applied it on the face of the cattle, could preserve the cattle from dying. Tonight, Madosi Ate, I pray for you. As we apply oil on your life this week, I decree and declare you shall not die before your time. You shall not suffer before your time. You shall not die before your time. For you shall live and declare the works of the Lord. Listen, when, 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 when they, when they smeared the oil on the cattle, the cattle was preserved and protected from dying. If they apply the oil, it protected the cattle. Can I tell you something? You are more valuable to God than cattle. So tonight, as we apply oil, as we activate the oil upon our lives, may your life be preserved. May your life be protected. May your life be secured. May, if you apply the anointing, you invoke the anointing upon your children, they shall be protected. When you invoke the anointing upon your house, you they shall be covered. When you invoke the anointing upon your marriage, it shall be covered. When you invoke the oil upon your business, it shall be preserved. So one of the main reasons why the word anointing actually came about was to preserve, was for preservation, was for preservation. Can I declare over your life? After tonight, my DB at her, let me get out of my stool and let me pray for someone. After tonight, I prophesy, may Jehovah God preserve your life, preserve your job, preserve your marriage, preserve your business, preserve your career by the talking of the anointed. Listen to me. The one of the primary assignment of the oil was for preservation. Let me give you a scripture. The other day, there was a king, the first king in Israel, by the name of Saul. When Saul went to battle, my God, I feel the anointing. When Saul went to battle, and Saul died at battle with Jonathan, and one of the servants, one an Amalekite came and reported it to David and said, David, there is a man that has died, and he's, he, he is. The, the king of Israel, King Saul has died with Jonathan on Mount Gibor. And, and, and David said, David made a profound statement. David said, why has Saul died? 
died like a man that has not been anointed with oil. Did you hear it? David said, why has Saul died like a man that has not been anointed with oil? Do you know what it means? What it simply means is this. When you are anointed with oil, you cannot die anyhow. David could not comprehend. David could not understand why a man who has oil on his head died premature. How can a man with oil on his head die premature? David said, why has Saul died like a man that has not been anointed with oil? Let me tell you, when there is oil on your head, even if you cut COVID-19, you shall not die. It doesn't matter what will come up against you. There is a level of security. There is a level of preservation. There is a level of grace that is upon your life that covers you and covers anything that is connected to you. And I pray for you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And I decree and declare upon your life, upon your business, upon your career, today Adosi Adaba, Vrikidu Amandudubu Asiante Tente, I release a word over you. By the reason of the anointing, you are covered, you are preserved, your job is covered, your marriage is covered, your children are covered, your, your business is protected from every evil, your life is protected from every evil. In the name of Jesus, David said, why has Saul died like a man that has not been anointed with oil? Why? When you are anointed with oil, you cannot die premature. Listen to me. When you are anointed with oil, you are different from the rest. Any time a king was supposed to be put on the throne in Israel, oil was taken and oil was poured on the head of the king. Do you know what it means? From that day, that they put oil on a man's head in Israel and they set him apart as a king. Do you know what it means? What it simply meant is that from that day, the person is not ordinary. The person is not ordinary anymore. The people began from that day to call the person with oil on his head as Lord. They began to call him as sir. They began to call him as, as, as our king. And listen to me, and they referred to themselves as servants. Anytime anybody was referring to David, he said, sir, your servant. And when, when David even went to buy a lamb from Aruna, Aruna said, I am your servant. Take whatever you want. Listen to me. When someone is anointed, that is what the Bible said, we are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a peculiar person. Listen, we of today, we don't just have oil on our head. We have oil within us. You, the 21st century church, the New Testament church, don't just have oil on our head. We have got oil within us. The Bible said, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And on that ground, in that, on that ground, in that basis, I make a pronouncement. After today, because of the anointing that is within you, the anointing that is within you, the anointing that is within you, the Lord shall cause a shift of things around you. Everyone you meet shall honor you. Everyone you meet shall respect you. Everyone you, some of you, you are not regarded. You are not respected. There is nothing good about your life because people don't see the oil you carry. But after today, your oil shall be visible. Your anointing shall be visible. Let me tell you something. David was a great man. He was killing bears, lions. David was killing lions and bears in the wilderness. Nobody acknowledged him. When David was on the wilderness, he was fighting lions, he was fighting bears. No one acknowledged him until the day Saul put, uh, sorry, Samuel put oil on his head. After Samuel put oil on the head of David. Do you know what happened? What happened was that after Saul put Put oil, sorry, after Samuel put oil on the head of David. Right from there, David went to battle and he became the talk of the 
Satan, listen to me, not until, not until, not until, take it from me, not until oil is put on your head, not until oil is put on your head, there is no way people will recognize you, there is no way people will acknowledge you, not until oil is put on your head, you will be rejected forever, not until oil is put on your head, nobody will see the good in you, not until oil is put on your head, nobody will see what you carry, but today in the name of Jesus, because of the oil that is coming upon your head, you are like David in the wilderness, you are about to come out, you are about to be shown, you are about to come out, you are about to be shown. To come out, you are about to be shown. You are about to come out. You are about to be shown in the name of Jesus. You are about to come out right now. You are about to be shown. You are about to come out right now. You are about to be shown visibly. People are go you are going to be made visible in the eyes of people. You are going to be made visible. I'm telling you, after this week, because oil shall come upon your head. 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 Receive it in the name of Jesus. Oil shall come upon your head. Ma'adabaya. Rabba Kadaba. Tonight, oil. Oil is coming upon someone's head. You see, David was a, a slave boy on the wilderness. Not until oil came upon his head. After oil came upon David's head, David was no longer ordinary. When David killed one thing, it became a news. Some of you, no man is looking at you because oil has not been poured on you yet. Nobody is looking seeing your business because oil has not come upon it yet. Nobody is see your greatness because oil has not come upon it yet. When oil comes upon you, now they started looking for David. David was looked for in the palace. Can I tell you something? All that David was doing before, he used to do them, but without the oil, it was not news. But when oil comes upon your head, some of you, you are so beautiful. You are a beautiful woman. You know how to talk, how to walk, how to do everything, but no man is noticing you because oil has not come upon your head. But today, Madusama, Ikede Moshaniata, David understood the essence of oil. David realized that it was oil, the anointing oil that shifted his life. David realized that it was the oil, the anointing that moved him from being a wilderness boy to, and took him to the palace. It was the oil that empowered a 17 year old boy to fight a giant in, of war. Can I tell you something? When the oil is upon your head, the reason why you can't fight those battles and every now you look defeated is because oil has not come upon your head. But today, there is oil that is coming upon your head. It will make you fight battles. You shall overcome battles. You shall overcome situations. You shall overcome anything that the enemy throws at you. You are receiving power. Wherever you are, I release power upon your life. You are receiving power to fight battles in the spirit. You are receiving power to overcome every power that will come out against you. Like David, you are not acknowledged you are not seen, nobody knows you, but tonight as oil is coming upon you, there is a shift in the spirit, 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 receive it in the name of Jesus, I command supernatural shift, I command the supernatural shift, I command the supernatural shift, I command the supernatural shift, there is a shift that is Madabahaya, a shift, 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 a shift. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Watch this. When David, after David was anointed, people started looking for him. Let me tell you, people shall begin to look for you. Why? Because from today, all you shall come on your head. People shall look for you. You shall go to places that matter. Your name shall be mentioned in proper boards that matter. Your desires. David was being looked for in the palace. Why? Because oil had come on his head. Oil. That is why the other day in Psalm 92, David understood the power of the oil. And David said, my head shall be anointed with fresh oil. 
Did you hear that? David said, my head has thou anointed with fresh oil. David understood the power of fresh oil. Listen, David knew I got an oil the other day. I need a fresh oil, a fresh oil, a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing. I pray for you tonight that may a fresh anointing come upon your life. A fresh anointing, a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing. Listen, anointing is what sets you apart. What made the kings of Israel different from the ordinary people was because oil had come upon their head. When all oil came upon their head. They were no longer seen as ordinary people. When oil comes upon you tonight, every office you enter, you'll be different. Every place you go, grace will find you. You shall be different. When oil comes upon your head, you shall be sought after. People will look for you. People will look for you. Companies will look for you. Organizations will look. Why? Because there is oil. There is an anointing upon your head. Let me tell you, if there is something you need to pray for, it's the anointing. If there is something you need right now in this season, it's the anointing. When you are anointed, how was David able to overcome the, the lions and the bears? And how was David able to kill a giant? The giant nobody. Listen, in Israel, all of the people were running away from the giant. The only person that could fight Goliath was David. Why? Because he had been anointed with oil. Some of you, you will fight the giants in your family. There is a a, a strong man in your family. You are the only one that is anointed to fight them. Why? Because there is oil on your head. 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 Say, I receive oil. Say, I receive fresh oil. Say, I receive fresh oil. Put your hand on your head. Don't look at me as if you are watching a movie. This is, this is a serious season. Put your hand on your head. Say, I receive fresh oil. I receive fresh oil. Fresh oil come on my head. 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 Madabada brasa. Rabba boso to adis. Fresh oil. When oil comes upon your head, you are empowered for battle. When oil comes upon your head, you, when you were rejected, you shall be accepted. When oil comes upon your head, you shall be looked for, you shall be sought after. People will look for you. Nobody was looking for David. David was invited to state house. David was invited to state house. Why? Because oil had come on his head. After oil came on his head, they said that Saul, a spirit came upon Saul and they started to look. Is there somebody that can play a harp that will make these demons that is afflicting? So they look for David and David started a, a wilderness boy, a homeless boy was invited into state house. A prophesy today, Mazuka Diabaziante Tente, because of the oil. You shall be the next king. You shall be invited to higher offices, higher places. Your name shall be ringing in people's ears. Receive grace for higher offices. Receive grace for your next level. Because of the oil, Mandadabaya, Rabba Kodobo Usita, A by fire by tender. If David, after the oil, was called to state house, somebody is about to be called back by your husband. The man that left you, there is an anointing that is going to bring that man back. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. There is an anointing. There is a lady. I preached this sermon in one of our services the other day. And the lady, as I was preaching, came to place a seed at the altar. The lady, after that time, she said, man of God, everything happened so fast. She said, man of God, after I left, after I placed the seed at the altar and I tapped into the anointing, she said, man of God, I was believing God for a white man to marry me. I was believing God for a white man to marry me. The next place I went the next, the following week, he was sitting at a coffee place. A certain guy came to sit by him. The guy was a white guy in the British Army. They, they started talking. The one thing led to the another. The next thing, they... They were ready to get married. Within less than three months, the guy married the woman. Within less than six months, they were planning on how to buy a house in this country. Listen, when the anointing comes upon your life, when you don't deserve, they will call you. You see, you may not deserve a position, but when the anointing is upon your life, if a wilderness boy after anointing could be called,
called to state house. He's a wilderness boy after anointing could overcome a giant. I don't know any giant that is in your family. You are receiving an anointing to overcome them. This time around, it is not Prophet David that is praying for you. You are going to be called Prophetess Mercy. You are going to be called Prophetess Mary. You are going to be called Prophetess Mark Oliver. Prophet, sorry. I beg your pardon. Prophet Mark Oliver. You see, David was a nobody if you care to know. He was no one. No one knew him. But because oil came on his head. When oil came on the boy's head, the boy became worldwide known. He was called for in a meeting in state house. He was called for meetings that no one had ever been called for because of the oil that is coming on your head. Because of the oil, the anointing. Then somebody says, man of God, nothing is working. No, don't worry. Today, things will, from today, things will begin to work. Why? Because an anointing is coming to you. There is a, the man doesn't look at you anymore. An anointing is coming. You see, you can receive, I told you, and you, you we, we, the anointing is not just for preaching. You can be anointed for anything. Something was anointed to beat up people. Something's anointed was for what? Something was anointed for strength. He was just beating people. You can be anointed for marriage. You can be anointed for business. You can be anointed to teach. You can be anointed for to do anything. Today, receive anointing for your next level. Today, receive anointing. Anointing, Calista, for your house. Let it come upon you. Anointing to claim properties. Anointing for divine establishment. Hey, Ababa Suta. There is an anointing coming upon somebody. You shall be called anointed Nora. Prophetess Nora. Why? Because power. Is coming upon you, Madabahaya. Anointed John Guthika. Power is coming upon you. There is an anointing that is coming upon people tonight. Kadabanabaya. Brando Sikata. Vradu Ziantaya. You see, you see, this week I am going to be dealing with the teachings on the anointing. Tomorrow, I am going to teach you the five things you need to know about the anointing. Tomorrow is going to be mega. It's going to be fire. It's going to be, it's going to be another level. I'm telling you. I want to teach you how you need to know that you are anointed. Let me, let me give you let me give you a synapse of tomorrow's word and then we can begin to pray and then we can begin to go. We can start to make ourselves to go and sleep. And those of you that are still going to work, you can go to work. First John. Now, listen, the, 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 the constituents of the oil. Like I said to you, first John, what you need to know about your first John chapter 2, verse 20. If you have the amplified version of the Bible, read it. I mean the amplified original, not the amplified classic. Amplified, there are two types of amplified Bible. We have the AMP and the AMPC. I'm reading from the AMP. Now, amplified original. Now, let's, this is 1 John chapter 2, verse 10. Listen to what you need to know about the anointing. It will shock you. It will shock you. You will not, No pastor can deceive you anymore. No prophet can make them feel that they are the only powerful people on earth. Listen to the, listen to the word of God for yourself. It says, it says 1 John chapter Chapter 2, verse 20. Let's hear the word of the Lord. Let's hear the word of the Lord. Are you ready to hear? Let me read it. He said, but the anointing you... He says, sorry. He said, but you have an anointing. Hey, yeah, ba, 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 yeah. Did you hear what I told you? I said, the Bible, the Bible says, for... He says, but you have an anointing. He didn't say you have an anointing. He said, but you already have an anointing. My, yeah, my, yeah, my, yeah. A di 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 a di 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 a di di di. Hey, abrasoto. Did you hear that? He said, but you have an anointing. First John chapter two verse twenty. You see, if you can, every one of you, if you have a little money, buy the Amplified Bible because. Anytime I'm teaching in church, I like to use the amplifier because it's it's more descriptive. It's the closest to the original Greek and Aramic, in uh, especially when you are dealing with things in the New Testament. First John chapter two verse twenty. You see, First John he says, "But you have an anointing." He didn't say you are going to have an anointing. He said you already have an anointing. You have an anointing. Say after me, I'm anointed. The first thing, the 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 fourth thing you need to know here is that you are anointed. If anybody makes you feel you are not anointed, I'm telling you, that's what I'm telling you, don't let anybody, any pastor or prophet or man of God deceive you or, or, or whatever to make them feel as if they are the only one they are anointed. My friend, you are also anointed. Hey, I said you are also anointed. You, you, you. He says, but you have. No, he 
We are reading the word of God. Are you hearing me? We are reading scripture. We are not reading anything. The Bible says, but you have an anointing. But you, Mark Oliver, you have an anointing. You, Preska, you have an anointing. You, Jacqueline, you have an anointing. You, Faith Harry, you have an anointing. You, Harad, he says, but you have an anointing. That means you already have an anointing. There is a dimension of anointing that is within you. You are not going to get it. You already have it. You see, sometimes, you see, some people feel that like only pastors are anointed. You are also anointed. Don't let anybody deceive you. No short change here. Sometimes, you see, that is why I, I, I people say, the Bible says, don't touch my anointed. Don't touch my, that scripture is in twofold. Listen, you know, some pastors have been using it to terrorize their church members. You see, he said, don't touch the anointed. Hey, when they tell, when somebody tell you, don't, he said, me also, this scripture refers to me also. Pastor, you should also, don't touch me. Also. Because, see, scripture is scripture. The Bible says, we, we also, we all are anointed. So it is not the pastor only that is anointed, or the prophet only, the, or the apostle only, or the bishop. Every body, every Christian has anointing. He said, but you have an anointing. From the Holy One, Mahanda Rabasita, you have been set apart, specially gifted and prepared by the Holy Spirit. He said, But you have an anointing, Mandi Azita, Ikedede Boasia, Nelly, you have an anointing. You have an anointing. You need to believe it, accept it, run with it, that you carry an anointing. So when the Bible says that, uh, when the Bible says that, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm, that scripture is in two. That is Psalm 105 verse 15. That, uh, that, that preachers used to terrorize you. Let me teach you a secret. Uh, don't go, if you are not, I mean, if you don't go and terrorize a pastor, you, uh, you have been lying to us. Don't go and say that, or I will not be there to defend you. But just know for your own consumption. He says, the Bible says that, for, for the Bible says that, um, um, touch not my anointed. That scripture refers to every Christian. Nobody is expected to touch any Christian. It is not right. You, they, they are not allowed to touch you for any reason. The Bible says, touch not my anointed. Touch not my anointed. That scripture refers to you. Touch not me. Don't touch me. The, it is the second part that refers to men of God. And he says, and do my prophets no harm. For the prophets, he says, or the men of God, he says, don't do them harm. He said, touch not in Jumahel. Touch not in Vambaraza. Touch not. Sally, touch not. Samuel A.J. Touch not. Shingi Mugasa. Touch not. Max. Touch not. Abigail Adisi. Touch not the anointed. Hey, Ababaya. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. In every one of you, the touch not refers to you. So when any witch, wizard, sorcerer, any village witch that does, you see, you see, the, the most painful and the most dangerous of the witches are the village witches that have not been to school. When a village witch that has not been to school is attacking you, my friend, they are attacking you mercilessly. They leave room for no for nothing. They finish you completely. Any village witch or city witch, the city witches they eat KFC and McDonald's, so they are a bit lenient. But the village witches they are dangerous. Any city witch or village witch that want to attack you today, Maziti Agaba Hadibi Ata, we command and declare: touch not, touch not, touch not. Touch not my anointed. Hadadabaya. Nobody is expected, is permitted to touch you. Now we are going to make prayer tonight. As per what we have read, tomorrow I am going to go deeper throughout until Friday. And I'm telling you, it's going to be mega. It's, it's, it's tomorrow is, uh, uh, and this week is teaching week. Touch not. Touch not. Touch not my anointed. Touch not my anointed. You have an anointing. Hey, Sata. You have an anointing. There is a dimension of oil you have upon you. You have oil. Touch not. You have oil. I'm telling you, you have oil. There is oil on your head. 
You see why? That's why I'm fearless. There is oil I carry. That there is a dimension of oil I carry that I know cannot be destroyed by the enemy. The devil can't take it away from me. Touch not my anointing. And do my prophets no harm. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? We are taking our first scripture, uh, our first prayer point. You are declaring that by the reason of the anointing, nobody shall be able to touch you. By the reason of the oil upon your life, no one shall be able to touch you. Lift up your voice and pray. You are making prayer. Excuse me. That by the reason of the oil, no one shall touch you. Nobody shall touch you. Lift up your voice and pray. Mazi kabata. Rabako jede de bosha. Randi mi kabrante de de bosha maya. Masi kadusi anta. Rapadoshi abranta. Rapadoshi atani mi kapa. Rabada brashanda bante mi mi kapa. Mi anta bana bosha branta bana brashanta. Ika panda baswanta da branto se. Ika para bosha bana brante mi 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 kapa. Rapada brashanda bana brianta. Mi antaba di mi antaba mi antaba di mi antaba mi antaba di mi antaba rapa do si ata mi ante di 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 ata rapa do sia 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 makoro bo sha rapa Rabra shante bere beha mi ante de 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 bosha mi kapadu akabranta ba rapa da bashwante tendi mi kapa Father we pray tonight by the reason of the anointing we declare we are untouchable our businesses are untouchable our marriages are untouchable our ministries are untouchable and we decree our and we decree our relationships are untouchable in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, we activate the power of the oil upon our lives. Madosi ataya, rabakoda bataya. No witch is permitted to touch you because of the oil. No demon is permitted to tamper with your life because of the oil. No sorcerer is permitted to touch you because of the oil. Mati atuzaba, rabakosite, imanto dabasita. Repepepe de mi antaba, rante de mi cabrantaba, rapa da bako shataya, ivrente adabasuta. Tonight we declare, eya bazuni antete, eya bandi atadabasa, vrako shatandia, rabababatata, makodo abrante, rente tende bete, rente tende bete. By the power of the Holy Ghost, we activate the oil. We activate the oil. We activate the power of the oil. And so we declare no weapon that is formed against our lives shall prosper. And every tongue that lifts itself against us, we it is condemned. The tongues of the enemy are condemned. The Bible said, touch not the anointed. I am the anointed. You are the anointed. We make prayer tonight. And the Boshaba, the Bondi Bikapa, Rabba Basuta, Heya Basuta, Limi Antaba, Libonda Bakosha, Rapa Padua Kadese, Heya Babasuta, Makoda Azita, Rande de Boshaya, Makondi Bi Apa, Rapa Pandia, lift up your voice, begin to pray by the anointing, your job is covered, by the anointing, your family is covered, by the anointing, your children are covered by the anointing and the basuta. Maureen, I pray for you. By the anointing, the doors are opening one more time. Finances are coming to you one more time. Businesses are coming to you one more time. In the name of Jesus, by the anointing, things are working for you one more time. 
in the name of Jesus. Makodo se vayo satea mandi abrasute vreke ya papanta iva tutu atis ike ya babasata. We make prayer tonight and we decree by the reason of the oil. Chains are breaking. 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 Pios. 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 Rababa Kadabra Shandabare Brianta. Ika Pandi be Anta Rabasiantata. Ika Pandi be Anta Barabrasiantata. Makoro Borobo Shetea. Vada badua kabranta baya, rete te dere de bosha, makoro bosi ante, ika pandi bi ante, ika pandi bi ante, ika pandi bi ante, ika pandi bi ante, rapa para bosha. By the region of the oil, we declare we are covered. We declare we are covered. We plead the oil as a cover over our lives, our families, our children. Matosha. Rapapa, Makorobo Shata, Randa Bakosha, Apandoku Abrasite, Pelebrianta, Makorobo Shaya, Fediata, Rapatosi, Eyababasuta, Inkaduantete, Ibano Sabata. In the name of Jesus, we activate the oil. In the name of Jesus, we activate the oil. In the name of Jesus, we activate the oil. In the name of Jesus, we activate the oil. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, we activate the oil. In the name of Jesus, we activate the oil. Payo Sabataya. Rabba Suta. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Now you are making the next prayer. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? You are taking the next prayer right now. You are declaring in the name of Jesus. I told you the anointing that came upon David moved him from the wilderness. To state house to the palace you are making prayer by the oil on your head let there be an elevation let the oil bring elevation let the oil bring elevation you are going to be elevated to your next level david left the wilderness and was now given a palace treatment he was eating palace food he was interacting with the kings and the princes let me tell you something you need to an anointing that will shift you and tonight that anointing is here tonight that anointing is here tonight that anointing is here you are taking your last but one prayer you are making prayer. Let the anointing shift you. 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 Payos kabranti kapa, apado bos kabanti kapa, rapa pa koshaba, rebe be kabrantu saba, atelele boshaba, rapa duwa kabranti kapa, atelele bos kapa, atelele bosha, makoro bosha, ipaduaka, eya papa, itata. Ipatoa, Rababaka, 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 Apaya, 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 Manduni Mikapa. Ivana Rabosha, Rapa Padoshe, Eyababasita, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. You are making prayer tonight. You are declaring tonight the fact that God. Let the heavens open unto me. Let the anointing single me out for a blessing. Let the anointing preserve my life. Protect me from evil. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Mazada by Abranta. Robo Kodobo Shedia. Rabba Barabra Shabrantaba. I parabo Shabara Brantaba. I parabo Shabara Brantaba. I parabo Shabara Brantaba. I parabo Shabara Brantaba. I parabo. Shabara Brantaba Iman Tabara Brazibi Biha 
May God preserve you by the anointing. You are being protected. You are being preserved. You are being secured by the region of the anointing. The anointing is covering your life. Your marriage is protected. Your relationships are protected. Your business is protected. The Lord is covering your children from all evil. The hand of the Lord is covering you. You are being empowered for battle. As David received the anointing and he was empowered to kill Goliath, you are receiving an anointing to be empowered to kill every Goliath in your life. In the name of Jesus, there is an anointing coming upon you to kill every Goliath in your life. Handabosha, you are receiving an anointing to cover yourself, your family. Rebebebe kabrantete, repepele mene antaba, ranta nabra shandaba, makodo boshetete, rebebe kabrantaba, rapa nibi anta. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. This has been your host, God's servant, the apostle David Ozu.